I am not going to talk about uh, SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 in this my talk. We are, our group are certainly working on these viruses, but I don't have enough data to uh, give a uh, presentation on that topic. So now we, I'm going to talk about the coronavirus and the host and non um, uh, uh, mediated by mRNA DK pathway in my uh, presentation here. Now, some reason, oh, here I go. So now we are interested in the uh, mechanism of viral gene expression. And uh, uh, any viruses, uh, virus gene expression is uh, controlled at uh, uh, multiple levels. For example, in the coronavirus, virus RNA replication is certainly important for the viral gene expression. And uh, we know the uh, replication requires a specific cis-acting RNA signals. And then we know that uh, NSP3 to 16 and the inner protein of a viral protein is essential for the replication and the many host proteins are needed. Also virus replication may induce uh, innate immune responses and then these innate immune responses also control uh, affect the virus gene expression. Now virus gene expression also controlled at the transcription level and also modification of messenger RNAs. We uh, passed a study in the coronavirus, identified the several cis-acting viral signals that is very important for the virus transcription. And then similar viral protein, NSP3 to 16, and inner proteins are needed for the virus transcription. The certain host of factors are needed. Uh, viral RNA undergoes a capping. Some viral uh, proteins and the host of proteins are involving and the uh, viral RNA capping and the we know very well about, uh, uh, we don't know very well about the mRNA modification, but we certainly know that M6A modification happened in the coronavirus uh, RNAs. Uh, gene expression is controlled at the translation level. Coronavirus undergoes a capital dependent translation, and they certainly need a translation apparatus for the translation to virus replication also uh, affect uh, the phosphorylation startup EF to alpha and they also uh, inhibit or, or promote a stress granule formation. These are the important for the viral translation. Now, one more step which is important for the viral gene expression is the stability of viral RNA. And this is, we really do not know very well how viral RNA stability is controlled in the infected cells. So we are interested in uh, studying the stability of viral RNAs and uh, we study on that in the, in the literature and they realize that the one of the important mechanism in the eukaryotic translational uh, quality control is a nonsense mediated messenger RNA DK, NMD. That this is a, one of the eukaryotic translational couple of the messenger RNA surveillance system. That means that NMD pathway eliminate messenger RNA has uh, some aberrant features, for example, carrying a premature termination code. So, uh, so our body has a system to eliminate such aberrant RNA because if the protein product from the premature termination codon containing RNA, uh, synthesized protein lacks a C-terminus region, and such a protein may serve as a dominant negative phenotype. So uh, when the eukaryotic cell undergoes a splicing and the messenger RNA synthesized, um, the Action junction complex bind to the splicing site. Now, this messenger RNA <coughs> come out of uh, cytosol and they undergo translation. So, ribosome rolling on the Y prime and they start moving on the uh, open leading frame, making a proteins. And uh, during ribosome moving on this uh, open leading frames, the EJC uh, dissociated from the template by the ribosome. In contrast, if messenger RNA carry a, a premature termination code shown here, this RNA also undergoes splicing and the EJC complex bind to here. The ribosome loading on the five prime and start making a protein and then translation timing at this point. So upstream EJC are dis detached from RNA, however, Ribosome stop here, therefore downstream EJC remains attached to the messenger RNA. 
Now this, if this form are for, uh, generated, the NMD pathway can recognize this form and they degrade this uh, aberrant messenger and the cabin of premature termination code. So, <clears throat> so NMD is a translation dependent event and the primary occurs during an initial pioneer round of translation. Now how the, this is showing the some uh, canonical uh, pathway, NMD pathway. So here's a PTC site. Now important protein NMD pathway is the UPF1. The UPF1 binds to the PTC site. And the downstream EJC several proteins, including UPF2, AP, UPF3, are bound to uh, in this downstream uh, spice site. After UPF1 binding the PTC, UPF1 and the downstream EJC complex, UPF2 or 3, interact and they're forming a, a decay inducing complexes. Formation of this activates SMG protein, which is a kinase, and the SMG phosphorylate UPF1. And the phosphorylated to UPF1 is biologically active and they promote uh, endonucleases. And then leading to the degradation of, of uh, NMD uh, uh, messenger and carrying a pretty much a termination codons. The past uh, many years of study shows that um, uh, NMD targets, host NMD targets, not only the messenger and carrying a pretty much a termination codon, there's other features, for example, messenger and carrying a multiple open leading frames, messenger carrying a long sleep M UTR, or messenger carrying a upstream ORF. These are the NMD inducing target. And when you look at the coronavirus messenger RNAs, we see these uh, <coughs> NMD inducing features. For example, this is a coronavirus genomic RNA. Now you can see several open leading frames. The virus uh, use the first two open leading frames they produce a, a viral proteins necessary for the virus RNA synthesis. So that means this downstream of this region, it has an open leading frame, but these open leading frames are not used for translation. So th this region serves as a non-coding regions. So coronavirus genome and the subgenomic RNA shown here has a multiple open leading frames, and then many of them has a very long sleep frame UTR. So Watching this of coronavirus genome, we suspect that maybe coronavirus uh, genomic RNA and the subgenomic RNA may serve as a, a NMD target. And it was also uh, re reported that the EJC independent NMD is known. And when we started this project, it has been reported that the genomic RNAs of alpha viruses and the some plant uh, viruses, both of them carrying a uh, a uh, single standard positive sense RNA uh, NMD target. So we hypothesize that the um, coronavirus messenger RNA are target of NMD pathway. The coronavirus uh, protect the viral RNAs from the NMD pathway, <coughs> otherwise virus cannot express viral proteins. So we tested uh, this hypothesis using a murine coronavirus, plus hepatitis as a model of virus. So first they examined the whole the, uh, the viral gen naked genomic RNA are uh, degraded by, recognized by NMD pathway and then degraded by the NMD pathway. For that, we prepared the NMD competent cells and the NMD deficient cells and then transfected the viral RNA and they see the stability of uh, transfected the genomic RNAs. So we prepare the uh, NMD deficient cells by transfecting uh, NMD uh, SI RNA for the NMD proteins. So you can see here, when we transfect the uh, SI RNA of UPF1, UPF2, SMG5, SMG6, we see uh, this target protein abundance decrease in the SI RNA transfected cells. The NMD competent cells, we use uh, uh, control SI RNAs. And we transfected the genomic RNA, and then 24 hours later, we stained the transfected cells using uh, anti M protein antibody. The result is shown here. Uh, cells uh, transfected the SI control RNAs, we see very uh, small number of M protein positive cells. 
the whole is depleted the NMD factors, the number of M protein cell uh, positive cell increases substantially, say about 20 to the almost 30 times higher uh, M protein positive cells, implying that the uh, NMD pathway uh, recognizes the transfected genomic RNA and the degrade uh, genomic RNA. And we examine the virus titer at the 24 hours after transfection, and then we find that the virus titer were indeed higher in the NMD uh, deficiencies. Uh, to know the stability of the transfected genomic RNA, we measure the uh, uh, transfected genomic RNA at a different time after transfection. So the uh, cells treated SIRNA control, then this is the degradation uh, kinetics. So the half-life is about three hours. And the NMD deficient cells, this half-life increased around eight hours. So this data clearly demonstrated that the naked coronavirus genomic RNA is susceptible to the NMD pathway. Uh, next, we wanted to know whether the cytoplasmically synthesized capped coronavirus RNA also degraded by NMD pathway. So this, uh, because we, we coronavirus replicate in the cytoplasm, so we, we want to see cytoplasm by synthesized virus RNA that degraded by NMD pathways. So for this, we made a plasmid uh, encoding a, a coronavirus subgenomic RNA downstream of T7 uh, promoter sequence. And then in this uh, particular RNA, the spike gene was replaced uh, by the Luciferous genes. Now, this plasmid was co transfected with a plasmid uh, encoding T7 polymerase. So, T7 polymerase recognized promoter sequence and then synthesized this RNA in the cytoplasm. And then we also use a uh, vaccine virus capping enzymes, uh, plasmid encoding vaccine virus capping enzyme, hoping that the vaccine virus capping enzyme uh, cap the T7 transcript, that's five prime. And uh, our uh, data suggests that indeed uh, enzyme, vaccine virus capping enzyme works because uh, expressed RNAs are much more translation active than the cells uh, transfected without uh, vaccine virus capping enzyme. So we prepared the uh, uh, NMD competent cells and the deficient cells and the transfected these four plasmid data cells with 24 hours, 20 hours. And the treated cells with axon was indeed to stop the newly synthesized RNA from here. And they examine the valid RNA, uh, express RNA at uh, two to and four hours after axon was indeed treatment. And then the, the data shows here the NMD competent cells, almost 90% of expressed RNA are degraded by uh, four hours. In contrast, cells uh, that are deficient for NMD pathway they are expressed RNA fairly stable. So this data also shows that uh, cytoplasmically synthesized viral RNA also uh, target for the NMD pathway. Now we next wanted to know whether the coronavirus replication inhibit NMD pathway. For that, we prepared a uh, cell line expressing uh, NMD uh, target messenger RNAs. So um, control RNA encoding uh, Lena Lucifer's gene fuses with beta globin genes. So this RNA is not the target for the NMD pathway. And the NMD pathway, uh, NMD target carrying a PTC, pretty much a termination codon, and the background sequence of this two uh, are virtually identical, only exception to this. So we produce a cell line, one cell line stably expressing control RNA, and then another cell line expressing this NMD target, which we call the NS30 messenger RNA. Now this, this RNA is widely used in the study of NMD pathways. So we prepared these cells and examined the abundance of these two report RNAs here. So the abundance of NS39 RNA was substantially lower than the wild type control RNA because of this NS39 RNA degraded by NMD pathway. 
Now we, we infect our cells with uh, coronavirus and examine the amount, amount of this report RNA at a different type of infection. We really do not see the big differences in the accumulation of this report RNAs uh, fast six hours. But you can see here, six, uh, seven hours infection and eight hours infection, abundance of any certain uh, increase substantially, demonstrating that the coronavirus replication inhibit LNA pathway around at seven nerve infection. Now, I initially uh, pointed out in early my slide that the NMD is a translation dependent event. And we know that the coronavirus we use in this study can inhibit the translation. So we wonder whether this uh, NMD inhibition was simply due to the coronavirus induced translation inhibition. So to know the when virus induced translation inhibition occurs, we uh, pulse regulate infected cells with S35 methionine at a different time post infection. Uh, the control with the mock infected cells, and here the I means the infected cells. So now you can see here, say for example, nine hour post infection. Uh, this is the mock infected cells, and then this is the infected cells. You see the uh, host of protein synthesis efficiently inhibited and the viral protein synthesis that detected the infected cell. So post translation inhibition are very obvious from the nine hour post infection. The our data in my previous slide shows that NMD inhibition was initiated at the seven hour post infection, showing that the, uh, coronavirus induced NMD inhibition started prior to the induction of virus induced translational inhibition, indicating that uh, uh, translational inhibition is not the main reason for the virus induced NMD inhibition. Uh, we next want to identify the viral protein which uh, uh, suppress the NMD pathway. So for this, we did a very simple uh, report assays. In this report assay, we co transfect the three plasmids. Uh, one plasmid, the uh, NMD report the plasmid, uh, uh, expressing the report RNAs, I just mentioned about before. And the second plasmid encoding firefly rushforest, this is a, a plasmid transfection control. And the third plasmid uh, are encoding uh, viral proteins. We use a structure of proteins. As a negative control, we use a plasmid encoding cat protein. And the positive control, we use a plasmid are expressing a P9 protein. So the P9 protein is a transmissory uh, gastroenteritis virus, NSP1 protein. This is a porcine coronavirus, NSP1 protein, which we know this protein efficiently suppress translation. So we expected that this P9 protein inhibited NMD by inhibiting translation. So we uh, harvested RNA after 40 hours of plasmid transfection. And they measure the abundance of this reporter uh, RNAs. In the cells, uh, co-transfected the plasmid expressing cat protein, abundance of NSP, NS39 RNA is lower than the control report RNA. And the cells expressing the P9 protein, uh, abundance of NS, NS39 increased. The cells expressing viral structure proteins, we observe that the cells expressing viral structure protein, any protein efficiently uh, uh, inhibited the NMD pathway, showing here the NS39 abundance increase. The Western blot is showing that the expected viral protein are indeed expressed. So we next tested the way that the N protein expression inhibit the translation, then suppress the NMD pathway. So we simply measure the uh, fire lucifers mRNA levels and the fire uh, fire lucifers reporter expressions in the transfector cells. So all samples show the uh, more or less similar level of fire fire lucifers mRNA levels, and the report activity was <coughs> similar among sample except for P9 protein expressed cells. So P9 protein, uh, as ex expected. Uh, inhibit the translation of reporter analysis. My N protein did not inhibit the translation. So this data shows that N protein can inhibit the NMD pathway 
without inhibiting translation. So we next text that the point that the N-protein expression protect the uh, genomic RNA from the rapid degradation. For this, we uh, express the N-protein, cat protein, and the P9 protein into the cells, and then transfect the naked coronavirus the genomic RNA to the cells, and then examine the degradation kinetics. So cells are expressing cat protein, so the rapid decay of genomic RNA, half-life is around 3.3 hours. In contrast, cells expressing N protein showed degradation kinetics much slower, and the half-life is 5.4 hours. So demonstrating that the uh, express N protein prevent rapid degradation transfected by the genomic. So when you think about the coronavirus replication cycle, the coronavirus replication happened and the genomic RNA released in the cytosome. The viral RNA, RNA synthesis occurs in the cytosome and the viral protein accumulate after certain um, time post infection. The once N protein accumulates, N protein can inhibit NMD and then viral gene expression should be fine. However, early in the infection, during this time, abundance of N protein is low. So we wonder the further the RNA infection, whether the newly synthesized body viral RNA are degraded by the NMD passwords. So we prepare the NMD competent cells and the NMD deficient cells, and they infect the coronavirus at the low MI, and they examine the accumulation of intracellular genomic RNA at the different time post infection. So first two hours, we really do not see the difference in the accumulation of intracellular genomic RNAs. However, after three hours, the five hours, the NMD competent cells, this is the accumulation of kinetics of genomic RNA. In the NMD deficient cells, you can see clearly higher level of uh, genomic RNA accumulation. Demonstrating that the early in the infection, before the efficient accumulation of N protein, NMD pathway recognize viral genomic RNA and then degrade, degrade it. Now, this effect is actually affect the virus titers. So, blue line shows the uh, virus replication, uh, virus titers in the NMD competent cells. And then these two lines shown here is a virus titer in the NMD deficient cells. So you can see here virus titer is higher at eight hours and the 12 hour post infection in the NMD deficient cells. And the virus titer in the control group catch up to the NMD deficient groups around uh, uh, 18 hour post infection because now N protein inhibit the NMD pathway. So virus gene expression occurs efficiently. So here's a summary. Uh, depletion of NMD factors stabilizes transfected coronavirus genomic RNA and expressed coronavirus subgenomic like mRNA. Coronavirus replication inhibits NMD pathway prior to the induction of virus induced host translational inhibition. Coronavirus N protein expression alone can inhibit NMD pathway. N protein expression protects transfected genomic RNA from rapid degradation. Inhibition of the NMD pathway promotes accumulation of intracellular genomic RNA and the coronavirus replication are in the infection. So in a very simple view of this study shows that the coronavirus genomic RNA and the messenger RNA are NMD target. So NMD pathway can degrade viral RNAs. Later in the infection, N protein somehow broke the NMD pathway. So virus can express virus gene expression very efficiently. So take home messages here. So the mammalian messenger and the nuclear origin and the many undergo splicing. And the such RNA has NMD inducing elements. This much messenger and undergo NMD mediated degradations. And then messenger RNA which do not undergo splicing are poor NMD type. Now, surprisingly, a study from uh, our group and the others now shows that uh, cytoplasmic RNA virus are also targeted to the NMD pathway 
surprisingly, because of this RNA synthesized in the cytoplasm, and then this RNA do not undergo splicing. So we think that the NMD pathway may serve as one of the innate immune uh, defense mechanisms to eliminate the cytoplasmic RNA virus. So this study was primarily done by my uh, two former uh, lab members, Masami Wada and then Rokuga uh, Kumari Rupuame, and then these other lab members supported this project. And then here I show the uh, collaborators who gave us an important reagent and then gave us a nice discussions in the comments. Uh, study was supported by uh, NIH funding and then uh, supported by uh, UTM grants. I stop in here and happy to answer any questions. Wow. Sinji, thank you very much for that beautiful talk. Fascinating. I'm, I'm uh, you know, personally very intrigued about control of NMD by viruses. Um, yes, I'm aware of your study, yes. So I have a couple of questions. So um, it seemed that the, the virus infection caused an incredible shutoff of NMD, almost absolute. Um, and the N protein alone did clearly work, but less strong. Do, do you think there's more than N maybe going on? Uh, I cannot exclude the possibility because we only tested the four viral proteins and the uh, virus had more than 20 proteins and uh, uh, many protein in the G1 region may uh, involved in the NMD inhibition pathway, but I, I, we really do not know yet. Right. So the other thing is, uh, you know, uh, people like Karen Beeman see uh, cis-acting elements in viral genomes that also suppress NMD. These, so these are RNA elements, mechanism not totally clear. Um, often, you know, resident in three prime UTRs that, that suppress NMD protect the virus RNA, and this would be uh, maybe gene product independent. Do you, do you think there may be elements in the viral genome here that also protects the messages? Um, we, uh, our data shows that the viral genome are susceptible. So, and also I didn't show the data, but uh, larger RNAs are more susceptible to the NMD. So my current uh, thinking is that, uh, um, uh, Virus do not carry the NMD uh, resistant element. Instead, the virus has a certain RNA element that are uh, efficiently recognized by NMD pathway, for example, UPF1. Yeah. So um, the current hypothesis is that, like you reported in your wonderful paper in the cell that uh, UPF1 probably no specific bind to the viral RNA non-coding regions, three prime UTRs, and they're moving on the uh, the primary UTR and the stop somewhere, which has a certain, uh, like a GC rich element. And then uh, uh, UPF1 pulls the area and then now that engage the enabled pathway. So we are currently working on to identify the element where the UPF1 and the phosphor UPF1 are, are bounded. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, presumably the feature that's being seen is just a very long three prime UTR, I guess. I mean, that may right, be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have some preliminary data that the certain uh, area, uh, we can call immunoprecipitated anti-PUPF antibody. So we're really working on that right now. Yeah. So this, this virus family just takes a, a very aggressive approach of just, just wiping out the whole NMD pathway without being specific to the virus. It's probably uh, turning off maybe the whole system. Uh, uh, right. So. Uh, so biological uh, significance, one is uh, protecting the um, viral RNA from the degradation, right? And then uh, uh, also, it's one question we always have is that then if a virus <coughs> doesn't, virus do not like NMD, why they don't eliminate NMD target element? So there may be some benefit uh, uh, by degradation by NMD pathway. For example, early in the infection, uh, NMD pathway recognized by RNA and the degrade, then that may prevent a very rapid accumulation by RNAs. That may, you know, if that happens, a host innate immune response may be kicking very quickly before the host 
uh, viral anti-interferon protein actually. So um, we are looking into that, uh, what is the significance of susceptibility to NMD uh, in, uh, for, for the virus replication. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a concept that may be often true, that viruses don't want to be too aggressive, that they want to right. delay long enough to keep the cell happy long enough to make a lot of virus. And if they're too aggressive, they'll, they'll go too fast and they right. won't optimize their production. Yeah. Yes, exactly. All right. Um, well, so I see one question um, from the from uh, Annette Bronx, uh, and um, the question is: Can and I know this is an issue uh, in testing, uh, PCR testing of people. The question is: Can fragments of COVID RNA, short fragments, maybe linger in cells for weeks or months after infection? Um, oh, I really no, no. I, I, I uh, well, I never tested that. Uh, uh, how did this viral in the state? But there are reports in that uh, in uh, other coronavirus, for example, uh, experimental infection of mouse hepatitis virus. Uh, several group reported the RNA uh, exists a very long time, yeah. and uh, we really don't know the exact state of such RNA. So uh, certain RNA may be <clears throat> uh, somewhat stable in certain environment, but I really honestly do not know the uh, fragment state long time the effects. Yeah, my, I always thought that without replication, you know, RNAs would never persist very long, but maybe this is not true. Maybe they can persist as, as just fragments. But I always thought there were these uh, sort of very long-term persistence was due to some low-grade replication in some protected reservoir somewhere, and, and that may be the case, but I, I guess we don't know. Um, but there certainly are cases where RNA persists in patients, and I, I don't guess we know why or how. Mm -hmm. Right. Does, do you know, does the N protein itself, uh, co coding, I guess, coding the viral RNA for, for assembly, maybe, is it very protective? I mean, does it protect maybe directly the RNA from degradation, I wonder? Oh, yeah, that's one possibility. N protein uh, forms a helical nuclear capsid. And then that preventing uh, NMD factors loading on the messenger RNA, yes, uh, genomic RNA. So, but messenger RNA also uh, target, I didn't talk about, uh, about a lot about this. So we really do not know how the N protein interacts with uh, messenger, viral subgenomic messenger RNAs. And the past uh, report shows that uh, uh, N protein can bind at the very five prime end of data sequence. But now I'm suspecting maybe any protein bind to the three prime UTL uh, messenger, and, but nobody reported that. So we are again uh, looking into it, uh, this possibility as well. 